Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and Friends. It's seen on the internet 24 hours, seven day. I would like to welcome Miss Denise Smith Allen, and Dr. Denise Smith Allen. Hi, Ron. And Mr. Henry Heather. Welcome. I mean, thank you, Ron. And uh, thank you for that, Dr. Denise. Yeah, thank Good you. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. And welcome to our millions of viewers worldwide. Let's talk about Trump, President Trump, and his tweets. If I was a Republican, I would be embarrassed. As hell, support this man. I don't understand that um, it appears that every same time he tweets, he's grandstanding. Okay, he wants to stay in the public eye. But these tweets is getting him constantly in trouble. Um, and people are uh, beginning to reject. This population is 30%, 34%, the lowest uh, uh, of any uh, U.S. president in, in history. This, uh, uh, this can't continue. He's supposed to be the uh, leader of the free world. And uh, uh, he's not taking his job uh, seriously. I mean, he's not on that reality show anymore. Uh, Denise, what is your thoughts on Trump tweets and his? Well, Ron, it, it's troubling. I mean, to say the least, that um, you know he has put it in the minds of the people that support him that the news is fake, and therefore he doesn't want to um, be challenged. So, uh, if like most other presidents have had an opportunity to. Um, engage uh, the press um, in the Rose Garden or whatever, and they have uh, question and answers and, and those kinds of things. I don't know that he's comfortable with that. I think, you know, from what I see at this point, it appears that he wants to make sure that he is always in control, which that is another subject. But um, being in control, he's able to tweet out to the people who support him things that help solidify their position. Um, it's unfortunate, though, because he doesn't realize uh, the gravity or the seriousness of that because, in reality, whatever he's putting out there, um, it, it's a blanket thing that happens in the American people are um, looking at that and thinking, um, okay, this is not presidential. This is not what we expect from our leader. And at this point, he doesn't appear to either understand that or care. I'm not sure. Maybe it's both. But because of that, um, it's alienating. Um, we don't know from day to day, I, you know, from what I hear, it's usually early morning tweets. He must can't sleep. He gets up and he says things and they're very short. And most times, they are not necessarily truthful things. So, you know, it's, it's just really, really sad that we have a person, after having a, a, an eloquent um, president, uh, a former president who was so eloquent in being able to stand before the public and say the things that needed to be said to reassure people and whatnot, right now, each time a tweet comes out, I am inside. It, it, it makes me nervous because I'm just not sure who he's going to offend next? What else is he going to say to enrage or incite more division? And that's something that we cannot stand. I mean, usually when there's division, it appears to me it's usually because of economic hard times. And that seems to evoke a lot of um, responses from people who are ill-informed or, you know, ignorant by lack of a better word. But the things that he's saying now are dangerous, in my opinion. They're dangerous, and I'm just hopeful that um, the people who um, surround him or uh, talk to him are able to pull him back. I don't know if that's going to happen because thus far it, it doesn't seem to have had any um, real um, impact on him, but that needs to stop. It really needs to stop. Exactly, and I think that maybe if people weren't that are around him weren't afraid of his... Uh, uh, his reaction and his, um, well, I'm going to get you for this and or I'm going to get you for that. Maybe maybe they would speak up. You know, because you use the word alienated. Now, this man is alienated. The 
country and many other nations around the world, okay? Uh, it's, plus his base is eroding. There's no way that under, this, under the way he's conducting himself right now that some of those uh, uh, grandiose uh, ideas of his uh, during his, um, his run for president uh, will, will materialize, okay? Uh, he can't resurrect, the, the, you know, the, the, the Sun Belt and the Rust Belt, all right? Um, coal is like, a, is, is antique in, 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 many, in many ways and in, in many places around the country. It's all about solar energy, okay? Uh, um, things that, um, that are renewable, that are, re that are renewable. So, um, I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, uh, <clears throat> I, uh, as the president said before, this is a new kind of presidency, and <clears throat> he will not cave into any kind of monkey business. And he will say what he believes. He has uh, <clears throat> stated in more times than one that uh, he believes that the kind of presidency president that the people must be, this kind of president that you see. This is what he believes. And people have to guess what people are saying to them, how they're spinning stuff uh, in a subservient way, uh, clandestine way, to get you to buy whatever they put out there. Here's something the president will say above board, and you examine it, and you pay attention to it. And no one person runs this country. Absolutely not. I don't care how big the person is, how much power he's got, how much money he's got, what color he is, does not run the United States of America. It's the people that run this country. And we're part of that part. We're part of the process. We can complain against the president if that's what the Constitution allows you to do. You can correct it. And through this process of evaluating, we can correct his course and direction, if we think it's wrong. And uh, I, don't, um, I don't think um, what he's done to many of the people that he's alienated has been harmful. But he has checked a lot of people. It used to be that no one person criticized the rich people. No one person criticized white people in this country. But he does. And it's that there's a somewhat of a balance for those who have been left behind. Because now we can kind of rise a little bit like mammals did when the dinosaurs were here. Uh, so there's a lot of good things to say about the president of the United States. And not all is said and done until the Congress acts. I um, have a question for you, actually, too. Um, you said that he is critical of um, the rich and also whites. Um, could you give me some examples of that? Well, um, let's see. He has gone after the rich. How? Um, he has, by name, uh, some of the rich people that, and then I can't recall the name right now. You have me at a disadvantage. Uh, maybe um, uh, the one who owns all of the railroad transportation cars that take oil from the sands down to uh, to uh, not the Coke, not the Koch brothers, not the no, no. not them, mm -hmm. but there okay. are others. And there are he, others. Okay, and that's why initially during the election, the rich people backed away from Donald Trump. If you recall. Do you recall that? Uh, no. Yes, uh, it's, they they seem to have flocked no, to they, him. They back, uh, mm -hmm. they back away from him. And, it's, and I know where you're going with this, because it appears, and it was the things that the press is writing about him, that he, his, his uh, legislation is more favorable to rich people. And, but yet, uh, the discussion that rises up from the bottom is that people want to fleece the rich. And nobody, we should not even want to fleece the rich because our, we ourselves would like we have a lot of aspiration for people who want to be rich in this country that's what makes us a great country that gives us all the chance the land level playing field that we would not like to achieve during our lifetime that's still here well you know if we're going to talk about rich folks you know we should be able to identify 
who these rich people are, supposedly. Well, you can talk about a lot of them, except that's your choice. Yeah. Right. Okay. But, uh, you know, my question, you know, back to you, Henry, was in reference to, you know, the statement that you were saying was almost oh, as, as all, almost the same. Well, you know, he's equally, um, you know, there's an opportunity for him to speak about everyone equally. And he's yeah. doing that. Well, I, I beg to differ with you because most of the things that he says, it seems to incite divisiveness. It incites people to be angry, and in the meantime, the anger was, was in you before. No, no, it, it, no. It was always no. there. Yeah, well, always. anger, true. There's, yeah. there's anger. But what I'm saying to you that it has, in, it, it has inflamed it. It's made it emboldened, and people are saying and doing more things than ever. I mean, we're back are to. You, are you doing that? Are you am I? Doing am, that? I am I personally doing yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely not. But, but, are no. you run? Are you practicing anger and going out and attacking people? But there are those that are, and they have been they have been emboldened to do it. They have always been there. They have been, but what I'm saying to you now, more and more, we have these episodes where people are saying and doing things because of the kinds of things that you know come out of his mouth and or the tweets that he puts out there. You know, you know, to call somebody, I mean, flat out before uh, Comey, and I know we'll be discussing him a little later on, but before he even, you know, he's a nut job. You know, I mean, that is just... Yeah. It's like the British policy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but... They, it's, but not it's, it's, it's not presidential. It's, 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 well, that's, what's presidential? Okay. <clears throat> there's, 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 no, it's, there's, there's a decorum. No. There's a decorum. On the back. True no, no. Look, Henry, Henry, you know, in yeah. any position that a person has, if you if you, if you look at it from the standpoint of, of being a, a judge, if you will, okay, there are certain qualifications, mm -hmm. and on and on, they have to be vetted, and then when they're there, they have to uphold a certain standard, yeah. okay? And they can't talk to people any kind of way. No. And But you have this man who holds the highest position in the country, and yet he acts like a gangster to me. And me. Okay, my position is that he will say anything that he pleases mm -hmm. instead of thinking before he says what freedom he Freedom of speech. Absolutely, there's freedom of speech. But I'm, it. Okay, yeah. But, I mean, it's like the WWF. Anything that comes up comes out. And to be the kind of person who has been involved with as much as he says he's been involved with over the years, you would have thought that perhaps he would have learned something about um, relationships. But Trump sees America as a different world than you see it. You see it as a traditional way of looking at it. We see it as a the hill, uh, the nation on the hill is sinking by uh, other folks pressing it down. And he's, no, no, he's sinking it as well. No, no, it was sinking before. We're becoming kind of a, a poor nation. And we're being hampered by the loss of resources and an increasing population. We're changing completely. And we think that we have money to burn forever, but we don't. We, uh, the, the, we're not the wealthy country that we were 50 years ago. We're sinking. And nobody, everybody wants to have a check written out of the treasury to make their lives better. No, no, no. To no, raise no. them up. To so, raise them up. So, so in order to, to uh, use in your argument, yeah. why would you build your budget on the backs of poor? I don't know whether it's being built on the I, backs, I, Look, if you look at what he's doing, I mean, like he's what? cutting. Well, look. Look, you must look, cut the budget. You can cut the budget, but why would you build the uh, the military force, expand that, and take that from social programs? Why but, would you do that? But why not? We don't go to bed hungry here. So you we got yes, we do we millions of people, go millions of people go hungry every day. Uh, all right, one out know. of five yeah. children. All right go hungry every night in America. Yes. So that's the problem with the people that have things, all right? They don't believe. They don't believe that. that, that you know, that, I that, see that, the school. That, that, I don't go down the No, well, you might see that. The vulnerable people are the kids in school and the older people. Do you have, I don't see people. Your school right have, the school. Your school I see a lot of homeless people that choose to be homeless, if they say, well. Nobody oh, really no, chooses. No, no. There are jobs for everybody. There are a lot of jobs. What planning did you come from? There are a lot of jobs, bro. 
There are jobs in McDonald's, there are jobs cutting lawns, there's jobs, all kinds of jobs. And uh, people do not go to bed hungry as you see them. Does your school have a food, a feed, uh, a lunch program? Yes, it does. Why does it have a lunch program? Because it's mandated by the federal government. Because why? Because they know, because some nutritionally, kids, they some know kids don't, that, it's you know, millions of folks that, 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 that need those programs, okay? It's, a, it's, it's millions of elderly that need those, these programs. And, 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 we can sit back here, you know, and talk this mess because we got an income, all right? Yes, we do. And we don't, and we don't, and that makes us not relate How to much money do you poor. give back to institutions to help feed the, the, the poor? Other than every or, every or check I get, every check do you, I get. Do you, do you give back to college and university? Every yeah, check so I get. Black American college. How much do you give a year? About a thousand dollars. How much do you give? I guess I give at least uh, okay. five hundred. Okay, well listen, to my own you know, but we're digressing. We're digressing. No, we're talking about feeding the needs of those who are poor. We have a responsibility. Yeah, we. But we it does not have to come out of government waste. Listen, let me tell you something. We pay our taxes. Okay, we pay federal, we pay state, and we pay city. Mm -hmm. That federal money that's being taken out of my paycheck goes to support this government, this that's economy right. in this United States. So therefore, I feel as though I do have a right. But to you're speak not the only one. You and you have a voice. Are multiple. Absolutely, I am. Pan to the pot. Oh, and absolutely. That pot, once they pay into it, the, the the money should be responsibly used. And if it's not. And if it's not, we, the people, should be able to speak about that. And that's what we're having this discussion about right. right now. Because here we are, going back to the idea that this man tweets about any and everything. And what he cares about, the budget, if you will, is not a lot. But All he's, he's concerned about is making sure that those persons who own businesses are getting tax breaks so that they can continue on. Who and creates the jobs in this country? Business, business owners, but yes, business but guess owners. what? Right. A lot of them have already taken their businesses and gone for cheaper labor across mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, but that's coming back. Yes, slowly, slowly. slowly. Yes, yeah, 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 it's a process. It's yeah, but, why, how, how, okay. but why did they do it in the first place when they know that they had American workers here? American workers who were able and willing to work. And you're talking right. about the homeless. They created that problem. It didn't have to be. I mean, you think about Enron, just use, you use, there's several companies that have folded and have done some stuff that was mismanagement and criminal. But beyond that, they have taken jobs. We don't tear the country down for well, look at business. Look, look at the financial oh, situation. No, 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 no. Several businesses. We, we, to, we have we, to look at the fact that those persons impacted cities. Because for every job that was lost, even in General Motors here in mm -hmm. Flint, Michigan, Prime we Prime. had one job, General Motors job, that affected five to six other businesses because oh, yeah. those persons could not go out and purchase and buy and do the things that they wanted to do. Whose fault was that? General Motors. General Motors, yes. Oh, yes. General Motors were not in business to, to uh, be philanthropists for the public. They were in business to make money. That's true. And they gave everybody eight hours pay for eight hours work if you gave them that. That was a fair exchange. It was and a fair exchange. Up, However, hey, hey, hang on. Once people rose up, the middle class decided to buy foreign automobiles, reduced the market share for General Motors here, where they were employed by them, they helped to kill that industry. So now they go to China and build a. Uh, $2 million plant, right? Yes, they do. Okay. And there's a reason for that. Here's my concern. That they have to, in order to be here's my possible, concern. they have to. Here's my concern, the, is the fact that not only did General Motors decimate this area, but they left it as a brownfield. They didn't even have the decency. The people to, benefited back. They didn't, the the they didn't have the hang on, decency hang on. to we, clean the place up. Oh, they yes, they did. Oh, no, no, they did. I worked for them. Look at the poison they water. Look at if they, they, they were going to clean up something. Look they at the poison not. water. That was right. poison water. Yeah, the water was meeting water. all of the, the you know, regulatory standards. For that I don't thing. know who you've been listening to because, <laughs> because it's a bunch of both. All right? Poison water. It's 15 people that already died. I they call it legionnaire disease. They died right? something else. No. No. You know, no. Let's, 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 let's deal with 
the reality here. Now, this is fake news. Not oh, goodness. Yeah, you've been hanging out fake with it. You've been hanging you out with your president. Everything should be uh, <laughs> evidence-based. It is evidence-based. Picking stuff out of it. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Boy, you know, and now, see, now you really sound like, you know, so, you, 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 you bought into that whole um, ideology. You know, you, you know, divert, you know, ref deflect, and all this other mm -hmm. things. You're too intelligent a man to be sitting here telling us that that nonsense. What, what kind of nonsense? What, what was nonsense about that? Everything you just said, those last few oh, statements. Oh, General Motors. Yes. Yeah. General we Motors. General we Motors. We didn't look. protect the hand that fed us. Listen, and every time listen. General Motors wanted a tax break or anything it like didn't that, get, no, listen, no. City, City Hall, they, they were filled to the brim. When it was time for voting on getting some tax uh, incentives for General Motors, most times eight or nine, ten people in the in the audience. But when they wanted, uh, you know, changes so that it would benefit General Motors, that audience was packed, full of people. Okay, union workers and the like, because they knew how it was going to affect the bottom line for General Motors. Well, there mm -hmm. were some school systems also that was trying to break General Motors as well. And uh, you, you remember the lawsuit uh, we had in General Motors sued the school district, and I won't name the school district, uh, for all the money that it had come, $40 million. But I won't mention the school district. Well, I don't know anything you about that. You have to go back to General and read that. Mm -hmm. And that, that's because they were paying too much taxes to the school district. Well, well guys, no, they did the best they could. I'm, I'm sure that we, we could have had our, we could have had industry here if we had a bargain for it. We had been smart enough to do it. We were we smart enough. To, they used us they up and then the they, they said, Motors I'm not done. Have to leave. Yeah. General Motors left because it was a plan to leave. Yeah, they was. said, listen, well, they're gonna, we're going to do, we're going to ex exploit, exploit and do what mm -hmm. we're going to do in this area here until we've had enough. We've done enough. We've taken advantage of enough. Mm -hmm. And then we're moving on to greener pastures, and that's what okay. they did. That's what has exactly to happen did. before a country leave, a company leaves an area? What has to happen? What's the downside? What's the, what picture has to develop first? All kinds Why would they leave? Why would they? They're leave? making a great product. They're selling it all over the world. Why would they move? To their bottom line. That's bottom line. line. Mm -hmm. Always. They were not profitable. Mm -hmm. Their insurance was too much. Mm -hmm. Their compensation too much. The cost of regulations to restore the water in here and the soil, that became very costly. Well, why, mm -hmm. shouldn't, why shouldn't they restore the, the, the water in the, you know, in the soil? They're the ones that mess it up. Exactly. And you guys benefited from that. So I didn't say I didn't say I did. But, and then you say, it's that fault. It is. It is all of our fault. No, it's General Motors.